I had a dream earlier about Anna Jane. And I have went through all this with Psalm 35, which is referencing her because of Psalm 35. And I decided that I had put too much in there, too much information about some things. And if I do that, how am I going to be able to give some of this stuff? You know, how, how's God going to do that? It's best to leave some of these things with him and just keep my mouth shut and just look at him and just ask for grace. So here's the dream. I just, it was a very short little nod off nap. I mean, it was almost the hardest sleep. It was unbelievable how fast I went to sleep and how hard it was for just a few minutes. And I had a phone, my old phone that before I got this iPhone is an Android. And they had hacked me so bad that I got no peace. That phone, even when I turned it off, I'd have to let it completely run the battery down because you could hear them trying to push those buttons to try to turn that phone on. And it was so horrible that I didn't know how to make it through. When I first got saved, there was so much like going on. The hacking, as far as I know, that, that was later, but... When I had a hit taken out of my life, that was the Psalm 35. That's when the message for Psalm 35 came. And the first person I was told to tell about that was my mom because of her part in this. And I will leave it at that. Then um, I, I was told to tell another person. It was a person next door. And they were into deep Satanism. I'm talking deep stuff, and I, I think he was probably in this. He was probably born in it. And uh, anyway, I I had, uh, had all these things going on, including telling uh, telling my friend Anna Jane about what they had done with the electric and how I was electrocuted, and so on and so forth. But the point of it was as I was telling her about Psalm 35 and how the, I didn't know anything about Psalm 35, but it's about having unjust enemies, people who just want to hurt you when really you've never done anything to these people. You don't even know them. And then what happens is, is but, but the slander starts, the lies start, and every kind of scenario made to look like, look in the worst possible light. And it was during that time that God gave me Psalm 35 as a, as a promise. And I was laying there on the floor crying and crying and crying and praying. And I've always said, I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit or an angel, but I'm thinking it was more of an angel because I know how the Holy Spirit speaks. But this, I think, was an angel. And it said, you need to, you know, to go look, look at Psalm 35. And I did. And as I was reading it, I was told to tell my mom first off. So I had the dream about Anna Jane tonight. And I was on that phone that's all hacked. And I kept on trying to talk to her, but she kept getting cut off. We kept on having a bad reception. And I, and I started telling her, I said, Anna Jane, I was telling her through the phone, do you remember when God gave me that Psalm 35 and how he promised me you know, he was going to get me through this and that, and, you know, and I was trying to tell her that. And then we keep getting cut off. And I remember how frustrated I was. And then also I said, and I said, it wasn't just Psalm 35, Anna Jane. It was Psalm 37 too. And I woke up and I realized that God was telling me these people who hacked at me, it wasn't just about Psalm 35. It was about Psalm 37 too. And I was growing so despairing of what was going on that, uh, well, I was giving up. I just spent the last day and a half just watching secular movies even. 
and uh, old like old western kind of thing, and old World War II movie, and one that was actually pretty good about a man out in a boat who had given up hope. It looked like he had no hope at all. He set that boat on fire to get their attention. And finally, help came for him. It was Robert Redford uh, movie. His, he really didn't even talk much. It was just all quiet. And watching him through this struggle on this boat wreck. So I don't feel guilty at all about watching it. It really, I felt like, wow, that's how I feel most of the time as I'm going through all this. And uh, so I, anyway, I was just giving up, just thinking there's no way any of this is going to work out. There's no way. People think they're justified to do it. They think they're justified to read my private emails, private texts, uh, to to read a messenger, uh, to see whatever I've Googled, to watch whatever I've watched on YouTube. And, and they make judgments against me because of it. They really do. And I'm totally ostracized. I have no friends. Nobody talks to me. The gossip is so bad that there's not one person, you know, not one person who would say anything kind or nice, but they do judge me. They'll do that. They'll watch what I'm watching. They're interested if I have a dream and they're interested in bullying me and persecuting me, but they're not interested in being kind and being a friend. So I'm, I was growing pretty deep in despair. So it's like God gave me that call from heaven like I didn't forget you you know I didn't forsake you and that thing about Psalm 35 and unjust enemies and people persecuting you you know what I started thinking about it and not long after I had I had that dream I seen that we're attacking Syria the Iranians in Syria that uh, Joe Biden had ordered a big bunch of uh, microchips that he's ordering up and, um, and you know, it's like we've had this big thing with Texas and all these wildfires, COVID, and, uh, you know, it's like the Lord was showing me, I know you think that I have forgotten you, that they just get to do to you whatever they want and they will have no answering to it at all. They could just do whatever they want. destroy me at every turn, ostracize me. But he's like telling me, you know what? There's a place for you where in here in heaven with me. Don't give up. Don't despair. And, he, and I, I knew I was going into despair yesterday when I started watching those movies. I'm, in the last three days, just going downhill. I don't have anybody to encourage me. I don't have anybody that's a friend or kind. They'll come to judge me, like I said, and be mean. But nobody who's just kind a lot of people have been punished already for this. They've lost loved ones close to them. Cancer is rampant because of what they did to me while my son had cancer. You can't believe how many cancer-related judgments I believe directly from God Jehovah and the Lord Jesus Christ from his judgment throne. I know people think that I use God as a weapon. That's not me who does that. That's you being a, a bad person, doing bad things, and being a part of bullying somebody who is a Christian who... You are taking part in doing Satan's work and you yourself let the walls down. And I've noticed that one thing in particular with this with me is suicides. Yes, yeah, suicides. I'm not even joking. Suicides and cancer. People getting their, their kids killed in, in suicides, mostly, it seems like. Or they'll get cancer. Somebody, their parents will get... I've noticed it over and over and over again, and their prayers aren't getting answered for healing. There was one lady who did this, who watched, and boy, how she tried to get me. She tried to set me up in every way she could to, to make me look bad, you know, on her page. But what it was is somebody had given her a link, and she was into my business, and she had no business being there. Her son blew his brains out. The whole place was considered a crime scene. It, it was horrible. I've seen this happen time after time after time because there's such a spiritual involvement with this 
in this Psalm 35, and now I believe truly from that from this last dream, Psalm 37. It's just like the Lord saying, fret not. You see these people prosper, doesn't matter if they ostracize you. They did that to Jeremiah. And who knows? I really believe that, that God has done it and set it up this way. Jeremiah said, I sat there on my own. You know, I sat alone. I didn't sit with the crowd. You know, and and that's the way that I feel like God has done with me. Let me put that up here. Jeremiah, all the time, this is, you know, I've sat alone. And that's the way God wanted it. Right here. Um, Jeremiah 15, 17. And I'm going to, right here with King James. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. For thou hast filled me with indignation. Um, and you know, I noticed that to fit in maybe sometimes with my daughter or my brother. I'd go off into the world with joking and stuff like that, trying to make light so I wouldn't always be so gloom and doom. And that's not right either. I mean, that, that way is not even right. I tried just, well, you know, like Jeremiah said, if I just be quiet and not say anything, then, you know, but then your bones start to burn in you like a, like a Holy Ghost fire. So that doesn't work. But God knew I was really falling into despair this time. And he knew that it was people who say they're his that did it. For the most part. They're the ones who have really took part in this that has been the most destructive to me because they use the name of Jesus. Okay, can you imagine a little kid if he was abused, beat up, and sexually abused? And just like that Rabbi Zacharias caused people to pray with him after, after he had abused these women, he'd say, now let's pray and thank God for the opportunity that we had to do this. You know, because that's kind of how it feels. And they're going to be abusive to you and then just treat you like you're crap after they've done some, some really horrible stuff, you know? And so I, I was getting so despairing. And that's why I believe that I had the dream. And I believe that God used Anna Jane as a way to remind me, I did not forsake you. I did not forget about you. I know about this. I know what's being done. And I have not forsaken you, and I'm not going to forsake you. Because I was really trying to manage my time a little bit better as far as not watching cooking shows. or and I try to steer clear of movies, too, for the most part, because uh, that's no good. That's a time waster. So I try to, try to keep my time managed and especially cut down on the cooking stuff. And, and I've done that lately. It's, a, it's not been exactly perfect, but compared to what it was, it's a lot better. So there's improvement in that. And uh, for those who watch me and, and, and are watchers who like to watch, you know that's the truth. And it's just like the other night when the lights went out all over the neighborhood and, and mine stayed on. That's like that. That was a phone call from God to say, don't give up. I love you. And I'm not going to forsake you. And I know someday, someday he's going to pull me through this. And there's going to be a whole lot of people that's going to have to give an account for how they treated somebody who never did anything to them. I never did anything to any of you. Nothing. But that was God telling me that he's seen the whole thing. He's seen every bit of it, and he hasn't forgotten. And even though it seems like with Abraham it took years, or Jeremiah, how many years? Forty years? Some people I've heard 20 to 40. I don't know. I'd have to look at it again. That he warned and warned and warned, and I did the same. I knew what was coming, and I've seen it, and it's all coming to pass. 
and no matter what I said will cause you to have any compassion for me, any kindness, any love. I did hear a lot about you have to forgive seven times seven and you use God as a weapon. I'm not using God as a weapon. He gave me this promise. He gave me this. I didn't even ask him for it. I didn't even know about Psalm 35. He gave it to me to let me know. I see what these people have done. And there's going to be, this is the answer for it. This is what I'm going to do. He gave it to me. I didn't ask. He gave that to me. And then they say that, you know, Apostle Paul and them, they all use names. They came out with names. You can talk about what's gone on and what's happened to you. I mean, part of it, you're not, they'll tell you not to talk about it, but it's your whole testimony. It's your whole testimony that you had a near-death experience because you had a hit out in your life. And then they'll tell you, well, that's not forgiveness if you're talking about it. No, I'm, I'm going to talk about whatever Jesus tells me to talk about and to say it in the way he tells me. And it's not about unforgiveness. And if I tell you to stop looking at my private stuff, it's because the Lord told me that I could. It's not about seven times seven forgiven, letting somebody, they, they're not even coming up and asking me, hey, forgive me for doing this. They wouldn't even confess it. They're going to go to hell with this unconfessed even. Do they ever one time come up and say, hey, we're sorry for doing that to you? Or even admit, no, they wouldn't. That's the truth. But yet they'll warn each other and say, hey, stay away from her. I was a friend to her, and the people who follow her hacked into everything I had. They'll tell each other that, you know, and, and look out for each other. But when it comes to me, no, they won't do that. So I'm so thankful that when I'm so discouraged that I think I can't make it, it was God Jehovah who sent a dream to me to let me know it's still on. Psalm 35 still stands. So if you want to keep on looking at my private stuff and listening to my private stuff, I guess all I can say to you is go on ahead. God bless you anyway, you know. Just God bless you anyway. May God keep you and your family. May he keep you safe. May you be protected from this kind of persecution, you and your family. May God's holy angels in Christ Jesus' name surround you and your families and the precious blood of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ shelter you from all this, from all this persecution. And uh, may you just be filled with the love of Christ and with the glorious light of Christ. I love you and I bless you. And just because I tell you that this is wrong, it's not saying I don't forgive you. It's saying I've seen some terrible things happen to people for taking part in this. And when I say that cancer is, is, is like is rampant, I'm not kidding. I can't tell you how many cases I've associated with this and suicide. But no matter how much I warn, it just goes on deaf ears, just like before the COVID. I mean, just telling people judgment is coming. Judgment is here. It's starting with the house of God. It's all through my Facebook. I was telling it. But the Holy Spirit just told me, told me, I just felt like a river flowing through me. Most are uh, Laodicean and they have no fear of God. They don't understand boundaries like a serial killer will come in and just kill a whole family. They have, they don't understand boundaries at all. They don't understand that there's a certain boundary. And they do this in front of the Holy Spirit. And they know that I've asked, please don't take part in this. And they still do. And even on the world out there, not just the Christians, on the world out there, you can't believe how many people are coming down with, around here, you know, with cancer. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Because, I mean, I believe that happened because how many people saw that my, that was going on with my son and were heartless about it. Ended up losing a loved one themselves. They ended up losing a loved one. Not long after that, and amongst all this, 
And nothing reaches these people. Nothing does. So it's almost over is what I believe the Holy Spirit is showing me. Just have to press through and endure to the end. And it makes me feel like a lot of times that the people who are doing this just feels like everybody. Like there's not any decent Christians out there that wouldn't just hack into somebody and just wouldn't do whatever. You know, that's the way it makes you feel. But God's just telling me he always does have a remnant. He always does have a people that have not bowed down to these satanic powers to do these satanic things with satanic people. This is like bowing down to Satan, doing this to another Christian and persecuting him like this, and bowing down to Satan and worshiping him, worshiping at his altar. Because when you do this and kind of hurt somebody that bad and put their family at risk, that's all. That's that's Satan's altar. And I don't care how much you preach on your channel, a different story, you've still been bowed down to Satan's altar. It's going to catch up with you. But I pray that God will give you grace to repent. God bless you all. I love you all. I really do. In Jesus' name.